How to let go of the fear of being rejected. Hey, I'm Antje Boyd, Magnetize Your Mind expert, married eight years to my husband Brody. So let's go ahead and dive right in. Number five is rejection is protection. I love we're going to talk about this today because we're going to talk about the concept of rejection and what rejection actually really is. And what I've seen when I was starting my journey of dating is that oftentimes rejection was actually God's protection. Let me explain. So for example, I met this guy online, which you may be able to relate to, okay? And I live in LA and he lives in Chicago. And I, you know what I mean? Like I just projected enough you know, dreams and visions or whatever went on to him. And needless to say, I didn't know if that really wasn't true or not, right? Because, I mean, we were just texting and occasionally having phone calls. That was it, right? But apparently enough to at least get a crush on him and, you know, start to become attached to him and all of these things. So eventually, of course, like he told me, you know, that he's going to be scared because he's afraid that he's going to fall in love with me. Which, by the way, if you hear those words out of a man's mouth, run, okay? And the reason why is, because here's what we're normally doing as women, right? We hear this like, I'm scared, you know what I mean? Like, and then the mother instinct comes out. And it's like, oh, don't be scared, my little one. You know, like, love is safe, right? I'll be patient. Yeah, you'll be patient forever, because this is a sign of a dismissive avoidant attachment style. And the reason why is because they have not experienced that love is safe. They have not experienced that closeness is safe. They have not experienced that emotions are safe, right? More the opposite. They have actually gotten ignored or maybe even punished for their emotions. And so when they say, you know, they're scared of their emotions, okay, run, right? You know, I didn't know that back then. So anyways... But what was really interesting is I had a call with my girlfriend afterwards. By the way, this was back in like 2009. Um, and she was like, well, aren't you glad this didn't work out? I'm like, are you crazy? Why would I be s glad about that? Like, I feel embarrassed about it. Like, I feel like sad about it. I was I had high hopes, you know. We had like really great conversations and we really seemed like a great match on all levels, which is kind of funny because we haven't even met, you know what I mean? So how do I know that we had a great match on all levels? But, you know, you see how much the imagination, you know, runs wild when we get attached. And so she's like, yeah, but how do you know he's not a psycho? How do you know he doesn't have any medical issues? You know, how do you know he has like some some other things going on, you know, with his extended family. I mean, you have no idea. And I realized, wait a minute, rejection is God's protection. And just, yeah, it's true, you know? Or uh, dated this other guy and, um, again, didn't work out just after a couple of weeks. And what, like a couple of years later, right, we were having, having a chat because he was dating this woman and he had been dating her for a couple of years. And he's like, you know, I'm about to pull out because that's what I do when I'm like at the deepest level, when I fall like super, super, super in love with me, like even like we're together for like a couple of years, I pull out and I break their heart, right? And I was thinking, wow, I dodged a bullet. I don't know how I would have handled that, right? So that's number one, rejection is protection. I'd love to hear stories around that for you as well in the comment section. And the next one is rejection is God's redirection. So sometimes you feel like, oh my gosh, like this is really the man of my dreams, right? This is the dad of my future children, right? I can't wait to introduce him to my family. And then he rejects you. You know, then he tells you that he's not interested in you anymore or that he doesn't have feelings like that for you or whatever, right? That he's moving away, so on and so forth. So it can be also redirection because God's really saying this or something even better, right? Like, so I'm actually making you available so that you are available for the right man when the right man comes into your life, right? That you can actually say yes to it and that the right man is not confused and wondering, wait, is she taken? Is she not taken? And yes, I know there's like super confident men out there, right? They're literally saying if somebody says, oh, she has a girl boyfriend, and then, you know, they're going to say, well, she's about to have a new boyfriend. You know what I mean? So, of course, those confident men are out there, but they're few and far in between. For the most part, you know, if you're not available, if you're holding hands with someone, right, like, 
you know, he thinks you're taken and he's, he's going to respect that, right? It doesn't mean that you're not going to get together at a later time, but why would you wait? You know what I mean? Why would you waste years if you can't make yourself available? And this is actually based on the concept of true alignment and flow. So this is how it goes. So when you think about creating what you really want, what God really wants for you, right? Like when you do that, you actually know whatever you create has God's backing. That means when you guys have challenges, like God is going to back you. You know what I mean? Like if you are like, you know, I don't know, you need to move and you have a new environment or you have some challenges in your marriage or whatever it is like, you have God's backing, you have God's blessing, right? You have God's favor. And so that's what I wanted. And so um, when you're not in the flow, then what can happen is it can feel like you're hammering your head against the wall and wondering why you have a headache and why it's just like not working, right? And you're realizing that you leaned the ladder against the wrong wall, right? That like this guy is just like not the match long term. It's just like not making you happy or he's just like not aligned with your beliefs or whatever the case may be. So if you're open to the concept of alignment and flow, then you really see, wow, this is like a lot of resistance. There's like a lot of like, wow. I remember um, I had a date with this guy. That was like back in 2009, I don't even know, five or six or something like that. And it was right before I moved to the US. And I remember when I was driving to this place, we had this horrendous, torrentious rain, right? I mean, so dangerous. We had to like pull over um, because I was driving to him for like, he was like two hours away or something like that. And I should have told myself, hold on one second. Do you think that may be a sign that you're not supposed to see him, right? And I know what you want to say. What, and here, do you believe in signs? I kind of do, because I do believe when something's meant to be, it'll just flow, right? I'll give you an example in a moment. And of course, you know, I ended up, you know, spending half the day with the scan and already got the call that I was confirmed to go to the US. And then I had to go home anyways and prepare and all the things, you know, and I had my head somewhere else. And you know, it just was unnecessary. It was really like just a waste of time. And so I realized, wow, I'm just really paying more attention. And at the same token, when I met my husband Brody, everything was in alignment, right? I mean, I left Hawaii. We met in Hawaii at a spiritual discussion group after church, right? And so alone, what are the odds of that, right? And then, because there's all those different meetup groups. I don't know if you've been to Hawaii. I mean, there's like 75 different meetup groups. And we meet at this one, right? Um, but not only that, once I decided to leave Hawaii, he couldn't get out of his lease because he was like, you know, he would have not gotten his deposit back. And somehow, you know, he got out of his lease, like he got his deposit back and, and followed me 10 days later to San Francisco, where I was moving to from Hawaii. And so, so much flow, right? Like even when we were looking for a wedding venue, it was so crazy. I mean, we were just swinging by a friend's house who um, had helped me in like more challenging times and she was excited to meet my husband um, and so on, right? I mean, we were engaged back then. Um, and then she's like, why don't you guys get married here? You know what I mean? We just, I had just a magazine ask me to do the wedding in my backyard, you know? So I'm just like, yeah, I mean, you know, let's go. And, you know, just going to be so much yes and so much flow, right? Like follow that yes, follow that flow, right? When it's God backed, like he will be there. If there's like so many like obstacles, right? Like God may not be in it, okay? So rejection could really be God's redirection. Now, I'm going to talk about my favorite one that was the most eye-opening, okay? And that is what I call the Sarah Blakely effect. Now, why do I call it that? Now, you may recognize the name Sarah Blakely, youngest female billionaire and, of course, founder of Spanx. Now, what most of you may not know is that she grew up with a really incredible dad, really self-aware, and the dad was really teaching her the value of rejection and of living outside of your comfort zone. How did he do that, you ask? Simply, when she came home and she didn't make the team, or she didn't get the A, right? Or she got some sort of rejection, right? Or she didn't get into, you know, whatever, some club or whatever it was, right? He would like high five her. He would be congratulating her. He's like, congratulations, high five girlfriend. You know, you live outside of your comfort zone. You take risks. You're going to go really far. Now, on the contrary, when she made the team, when she got the A, right? When she fit in and the, all the things, right? He was kind of like, I mean, he wasn't like putting her down, but he was just kind of like, okay, go 
good. I mean, you know, good job, right? But he wasn't like excited about it because it just meant, yeah, you're probably playing small, you know what I mean? And you you got what you wanted. And so and so incredible that when she did door to door sales, she was selling fax machines. You know, she of course got the door slammed into her face probably more times than she could count. And she got so many rejections when she was looking for a manufacturer for her for her underwear, right? Um, that she was designing for Spanx. Like she was laughed at, right? But she's like, she was already so used to, hey, this is incredible news because that means I'm living outside of my comfort zone, right? I'm not. I'm not like I I don't need approval from people, right? And 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 rejection is not a bad thing. So, what can you do? You know, what can you do? So, one thing that I did with my women back in the day, we did a rejection challenge. And so the idea was, right? Like again, you know, how much can you get rejected? Now, I remember we had like crazy stories where women actually were saying, "Oh my God, I." I, you know, I got asked by the, out by the guy that I never thought would be because I would be getting asked out, right? Or, you know, they went to the grocery store, wow, I just got this piece of cheese for free, you know? Um, there were women who got raises. Why? Because they simply ask. And they were seeking out rejection. So it was great because we were all collecting our rejection stories. And this was like really like sort of like, you got like your medals, you know what I mean? Your batch of honors, you know, like, oh, good job. You got five rejections, you know, so amazing. Um... And we were like really celebrating just like Sarah Blakely got celebrated, right? And, but because we were seeking out rejection, well, guess what happened? A lot of rejections didn't happen. You know, rejections happen because we resist them, right? And that brings me actually to number two, which is the rejector versus the rejectee. Now, what I want to go into is this whole idea it's like an ego thing, right? It's like, well, he broke up with me, right? So now I need to get back together with him so that I can break up with him. I actually did that with one guy. So like just total transparency. But I didn't really know it, that that's what would happen. But um, maybe my ego knew it was happening. But I did not plan on that, you know? So women sometimes do that, for sure, right? But it's just wasting your time. It's not moving you forward, right? And at the end of the day, what I started to realize on my own dating journey, I'm like, there's actually no real rejection because there's just the wrong fit, okay? And the rejector just happens to be the one who found out first, right? So eventually, maybe weeks later, months later, the rejectee would have found out too and would have agreed. I mean, I really experienced this one with one guy, right? Like, you know, he broke up with me. Um, I was heartbroken. Then we got back together, totally unintentional because my intention was actually just to tell him the impact the heartbreak had on me and like what an a-hole he was and how much, you know what I mean? All the things, right? So the emotional impact and just closing my chapter, just being, just communicating clear, respecting myself. Um, but anyways, he fell in love with me and wanted me back and all, all the things, right? So we got back and then um, I broke up with him and then I realized, wait a minute, he broke up with me because he already knew that we were not a match. You know, we were not a match. I mean, we were spiritual, not, not a match. We lifestyle-wise, not a match. You know what I mean? I mean, now that I'm with my husband and that's something you have to trust too. When you're with your man, you'll be like, what? I can't even believe it that I considered a guy like this. You know what I mean? Like, it's just like day and night. It's like, there's no way he could have been like a dad. You know what I mean? There's no way I could talk with him the way I talk with my husband. You know what I mean? There's no way I would feel emotionally safe the way I feel with my husband and so on and so on and so on. So let that be a good reminder for you too, right? Like there is no rejection. There's only one who finds out first. And finally, this was like a huge one for me. Let go of the emotion behind the rejection. So quick story here. Back in the day, I was taking Landmark Education. Now, you may have heard about it. It's a personal development company. Um, you know, I don't know, you know, tens of thousands or whatever. All my friends went through it, right? Well, we all did it. And so within that process, you set yourself some goals. You set yourself some, some uh, you know, yeah, like some themes that you want to work on. And mine was like actually creating an authentic and trusting relationship with men. Because I was really resenting men, you know what I mean? I was resenting my dad for being unreliable, um, you know, for being not the man, you know, to show up consistently and all those things, right? For breaking his word and so on. So, okay, so after I set an intention, 
you know, I met this guy. And so this guy was like, just, he was kind of smiling, but then he didn't ask me out, right? But then he would flirt with me and all of these things. So I realized, okay, so I want to like practice on like opening my heart, putting myself out there, being like completely vulnerable, right? Um, and I'm not saying that you should take reach out to guys or like take them to coffee or whatever that was just like a real authentic um step for me of courage to break through my fear of like vulnerability right so i was like you know can we meet like after after this training at starbucks you know and he's like yeah sure totally which i thought actually okay that's kind of cool right so he's like definitely open and then we met and i just told him that i'm attracted to him you know and I was just so vulnerable and so open, like no stories, no like, you know, I'm, I'm so crazy track to you or anything like that, right? Just like really grounded how I felt and with really no attachment, just because it was just more like a courageous exercise to do in my program, right? And so it was amazing because he actually like cried and he really appreciated like that I was so open with him and it turned out that he had just met his future wife, right? So he's like, if I hadn't met her, I would totally date you, you know what I mean? Like, I just, this is amazing, you know what I mean? And that's when I realized this lesson about the emotion behind the rejection because I drove home and I was so lit up. I felt so filled up. I mean, it was amazing. I had this total breakthrough. And I'm like, wait a minute, did I just get rejected? Like, he just said that he just met his future wife, you know what I mean? So that means he's not going to date me. But at the same time, I feel like I'm flying on cloud nine. So it can't possibly be about the rejection, but it's about the emotion behind the rejection. So what is it for you? So I realized for me, it was actually me expressing my emotions and then it actually like really landing for a man that I was interested in and him truly acknowledging it and him having the heart to like really connect with me, right? I mean, he had tears in his eyes, all the things. That was it for me. That's all I needed. I had no idea that's all I needed, right? And so from that moment on, I'm like, oh my gosh, I just have to rewrite the emotion that's behind the rejection. So try that out and let me go. Let me know how that goes for you. Now, if you haven't yet, make sure to take our free love quiz to get the relationship you want fast by simply hopping over to getlovequiz.com or simply click the link right there in um, the comment section um, and if you haven't watched so already the five signs a man deeply loves and adores you, you can click that link as well to get that. Lots of love to you ladies and I will talk to you in the next video. Take care. Bye bye.